So perhaps we could begin with uh, what is the prediction market and in your words understand uh, uh, what does it do and what is it good at? The reason you create the market is because you want to know the answer to something. So uh, you could create a market in a company, say you might have a, a deadline of a project, will we make the deadline? You might have a let people bet on whether you'll make the deadline. And uh, the net effect of people betting will give you some consensus estimate of the chance you make the deadline, say 60%. And that could be, and often is, a much better estimate of the chance of making the deadline than you will get by asking the manager of the project or doing a survey or many other mechanisms for finding out the chance that it'll happen. So a prediction market is a betting market on something you care about so that you bother to make the market in order to find the answer to your question. So, what... The wolves go. So if there are a place where lots of sheep go, it turns out the wolves go there too. And because the wolves go where the sheep are, the market with more sheep are actually more accurate. So you don't have to just ask, well, in, you know, there's some parameter out there that says how many wolves and how many sheep there are in each market. And, and geez, you shouldn't trust the fact that there might be more than one and there are others, so you should just like give up on the whole thing. Pe the wolves respond. People who are informed traders look around for which markets are the places to make the most money. And the more places where there are fools trading is where they can make more money, more money and they do go there. And that means that those markets get more people eagerly trying to figure out what the price should be eagerly making larger trades and makes those markets more accurate. So that's just a general feature of financial markets uh, across company, diff, you know, larger companies are, have more accurate prices, uh, betting markets with more people in them have more accurate prices, that's just a general feature. Now, the thing to realize is these manipulators, these people who want to go in and push the price in some direction, not because that's what they think the value of the asset is, but just because if people thought that, then they would get some advantage, they are sheep. Because this is the definition. A wolf is somebody who is trading based on what they know or what they th think they know about the value of the asset. A sheep is somebody trading for any other reason. That is, that's the definition of a fool or what we call a, a noise trader. They're trading for some reason other than what they know about the value of the asset. So m most mar financial markets, the sheep are, you know, new doctors who think they know everything, <laughs> suddenly have a lot of money. Uh, but if there's somebody who wants to manipulate the price, they're also a sheep in the sense that they're, they're expecting to lose money for some other gain. If other people know that they're there, then they're eager to take the other side and trade against it. This isn't just theory. This is lab experiments, consistently lab experiments, and this is field data. People have actually gone out in the field and tried to manipulate these markets themselves. So, um, that might... Think for a moment about futarchy versus alternatives. And let me suggest an alternative which is a closer model than futarchy of real political systems, both democratic and non-democratic. And that's a straight bidding war. That's the system where people who want a tariff offer congressmen a certain amount of money to pass a tariff. People who don't want a tariff offer a certain amount of money not to pass a tariff. And whichever number is larger determines what happens. It's not a perfect model of how our system works, but it's not too bad. What futarchy <laughs> does is to weight that system towards the truth. Futarchy says, if the people who want the tariff are willing to spend more money than people who, want, who don't want the tariff, that will only get a tariff if the difference is enough to outweigh all the disinterested bettors who just want to make money. So therefore, futarchy, as opposed to that alternative, pushes you towards more correct decisions, not fewer correct decisions. Uh, thank you. Because I really do think that if we had this... Um, this blockchain prediction markets thing in the world, we could instantiate this idea of futarchy. And I think that that would, first of all, that would mean a lot less people getting angry about politics online, but it would also mean huge increase in global GDP growth and saving millions of lives, uh, hundreds of millions of lives, possibly, um, over a pretty short period of time and greatly increasing the chance of success for our species survival and, you know, spreading to the universe and all this stuff. So I, I honestly think this idea is cosmically, like, very important.